Welcome in, everyone, and thank you for listening to the 290th ever episode of the Missouri Sports Podcast, brought to you by 106 Apparel and recording from the MSP studio in beautiful Springfield, Missouri. I'm one of your hosts, Cameron Albert, alongside my good friend and fellow Mizzou fan, Kyle DeVries. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing great today, Cameron. How about you? I'm doing well. You been watching any of the NIT? No. How about you? <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, but I did see. Yes. <clears throat> My beloved Indiana State Sycamores yeah. are in the finals. Um, yeah, you're rooting hard for them to make the NCAA tournament. They should have made it, man. Obviously. You've been vindicated in that take. They're a fun team. Who's their best player? Don't ask me that. <laughs> that one guy with the goggles. Okay, yeah. Um, I know who you're talking about. <clears throat> they have some like legitimately good guards, too, but I don't know their names. I'm sorry. Maybe one of them is Robbie Avila. That's that's uh that's a big man. That's uh Kareem Abdul Jabbar. That's right. Yeah, I've heard that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was about to say, which I'm gonna just go ahead and say it, that this is probably gonna be a short episode. But I was thinking about that, and I say that anybody listening to this already has access to. The final they already know. length of the episode. Yeah, they could just look at it. They've already looked at it. Never thought they about know that. before we do. That's true. Wow. <laughs> <What? laughs> That's definitely not true. <laughs> um, what all are we going to talk about this week? We're going to talk about the Final Four, uh, NCAA tournament stuff, um, Mizzou basketball transfer portal. They also added a new assistant coach. And uh, not a whole lot else. So we'll get into it here. Uh, before we do, uh, don't forget you can sub- subscribe on YouTube, leave us a review wherever you listen to us. And of course, you can support us directly on Patreon, patreon.com slash Missouri Sports Pod. Um, Kyle, I thought we'd kick it off with the final four is set. We have one seed Yukon versus four seed Alabama. And one seed Purdue versus 11 seed Modiara's <laughs> NC State Wolfpack made the Final Four. Yeah, we've had like the two chalkiest teams you could ever imagine and the mo- like statistically most Cinderella team ever Yeah, in NC State, which mm-hmm. it sounds weird to say that about a Power 5 team, but they had to win going all the way back to like the play-in game of the ACC tournament, they've won like nine or maybe even more than that at this point, like elimination, like win or go home games in a row. They ended their regular season on a four-game losing streak. And yeah, what was their re- do, you, do you know what their record was going into the uh, ACC tournament? Overall record was seventeen and fourteen. Their ACC record was nine and eleven. So yeah, losing record in conference play, barely above five hundred. They had to win five games in the ACC tournament, including they beat Duke and North Carolina in the ACC tournament, and And then then, beat Duke to go to the Final Four. Yeah, absolutely, so weird. Yeah, Um, yeah. So for the the chances of them doing what they've done, like winning nine elimination games in a row, being the team that they are, the record they had was like a point zero zero one percent chance of that happening, or something like that. So. Statistically speaking, they might actually be the biggest Cinderella we've ever seen in the history of the tournament. Yeah, and they haven't really like dodged anybody. I mean, yeah, they had, they had to get an upset in round one. They got a little bit lucky, only having to play Oakland instead of Kentucky. But right, uh, yeah, Oakland's then, better than Kentucky. Uh, yeah, obviously, and um, yeah, had to play the, the two seed Marquette. I don't know, very impressive run. And uh, Alabama also, like, it's kind of interesting. They were a one seed last year with Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Miller and kind of didn't really do a whole lot. But um, Alabama ranked 105th in Kempom in defensive efficiency. And, like, something that I've always looked at for years is final four teams are going to be top 20 in Kempom in offensive and defensive efficiency. It's your trademark. And Alabama is said, nope, actually, we can do it with mediocre defense. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, honestly, if you ask me 
what SEC team or like, you know, what four or five seed could make a run, I would have probably picked Alabama. I just, they just, I don't know. They always seem to tep- step up to the challenge. They're incredible offensively. They just figure out how to put it in the bucket, man. I would have picked Auburn if you didn't know that already. I, yeah, I bet you would have. They were tenth on offense, sixth on defense. Efficiency can't be res- result oriented, man. You gotta, it, you yeah. just gotta stick to the formula. Yep, stick to the formula. I'm with you. It'll be all right. Better luck next year. That's true. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, I was trying to remember if there was any like real noteworthy games. I mean. UConn is just strolling through this tournament so far. Yeah. They're just, demolishing people. Like barely breaking a sweat. Uh Purdue is getting revenge on everybody. True. From last year. Zach Eady. Yeah. People don't like him very much. They don't. There's something about like if you're too tall and good at basketball, everybody just kind of hates you because it's like not fair, basically. It but it isn't fair, yeah. But that's kind of like basketball. The taller you are, the tall, <laughs> the better you're gonna be at basketball. <laughs> Everybody just thinks the refs, you know, help him out more than he yeah. deserves. I guess or something. Yeah. Like, he's already tall. You know, you don't need to call a foul. Yeah, yeah, he's exactly. fine. Yeah, yeah. Big Ten fans are complaining about him all year. Yeah, and uh, I, I thought maybe it might swing the other way. Like, you if, did actually say that. Yes. If the Big Ten fans are like actually know something and. They don't like how he's being officiated. Maybe the NCAA tournament will equalize that a little bit with new refs, but he seems to be doing just fine. Um, I still think, I mean, I still think UConn yeah. probably uh, dispatches with Alabama. You think they'll give him trouble? I think it'll be a close game, but I think I still think UConn probably still just wins wins it all. What if NC State just wins? <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> I'll be rooting for him. Honestly, like, I mean, at this point, like you can't count them out. Yeah. Purdue trying to do the Virginia lose yes. to a 16 seed and then the following year win the national championship. So bizarre. <clears throat> um, the best game, uh, the best tournament game so far was uh, Iowa versus LSU women's game. That's true. I didn't watch a lot of it. I'm I watched a little bit of it. I watched, I watched the highlights. Caitlin Clark is, she's crazy, man. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And to do that against like the team that you lost to, they lost to them in the national championship last year. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the game that a lot of people were looking forward to for sure. Yeah. The rematch. I feel bad for LSU, except I don't feel bad for Kim Mulkey. <laughs> oh no, man. She's, she's obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Final Four coming up this weekend. Um, looking at Mizzou news, um, the one of the bigger things I have for the week, Dennis Gates added assistant coach Rob Summers to the staff. Summers was the associate head coach at Miami, Ohio the last two seasons and previously was with Dennis Gates all three of his years at Cleveland State. He played at Penn State and West Virginia. And uh, Coach Gates said they're bringing him in to focus on offense and post development. He was like the sort of like offensive coordinator, basically, at Cleveland State under Gates. I think he's like seven feet tall. So, and uh, offensive minded big man coach, basically. Well, you know what they say about tall people? They're good at basketball. That's true. We did establish that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Missouri has some tall guys. Yeah. So he's going to be, I guess, replacing Dickie Nutt. Yeah. he's Dickie Nutt's still going to be on staff, but moving to a off-court role yeah. as a, an assistant to Dennis Gates. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, an Ohio guy, like Cleveland State, Miami, Ohio, maybe recruiting connections around that area. Won't hurt. Um, and then dipping into transfer portal news, um, a guy we talked about last week, Iowa transfer guard, Tony Perkins, uh, he visited Mizzou, uh, this past weekend and revealed a top six of Indiana, Oregon, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Mizzou originally from Indianapolis. Yeah. I think the, you know, the competition is going to be stiff there but you know i think he's a reasonable target and a guy that 
I think I'd be happy with if he did end up at Missouri. Um, I think everybody's kind of pointing at his not super great three point shooting percentage, which I don't remember off the top of my head, but it wasn't like horrendous, but it's not great either. And not something that he was focusing on a lot, I don't think. Right. I'll yeah, pull it he's, up real quick. He's definitely um like an athletic distributing point guard who can who obviously can score, but just probably wouldn't be shooting like a ton of threes. Yeah. Only attempted seventy seven threes and shot thirty percent. Yeah. But great like facilitator of the offense and in good size at six four, two oh five. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still I I'm still waiting for more interest in like a high volume three point shooting guard. We need something like that. And obviously we need a big man. I think it's been quiet, but I feel like Missouri is waiting on Taris Reed and Javon Porter. Yeah. To see what they do. Taris Reed took a, a visit to Kansas State. Mm. So and no news on him visiting Mizzou. Um, supposedly Javon Porter was on vacation this past week. So in theory, he would be available for visits now. We'll see. Uh, it's been quiet. Uh, Dennis Gates kind of likes to operate that way where there's a lot of names out there that they've contacted and then just, we're going to get an announcement out of nowhere. Um, did you have anything else, uh, transfer portal related i was looking at the portal just like in general and i thought it was kind of interesting we may be seeing um wisconsin transfer aj store on the schedule coming up because he's projected to go to illinois if he doesn't go pro yeah don't love to see that definitely a good player Mm -hmm. um your oh yeah we talked about your cousin uh tucker devries going to west virginia (laughs) yeah uh, yeah, we actually talked about that before he actually announced, but I think that was uh, yeah. pretty much everybody knew that was going to happen. Uh, y- you started to mention Zeke Mayo last week. Oh, right. And then we promptly stopped talking about him <laughs> when we realized he was probably going to go to Kansas, and he did. Sure enough. So I'm glad we didn't say anything good about him, you know? Exactly. Uh, Missouri also has been in touch with Sebastian Thomas, mm-hmm. who is a point guard from Albany. And he put up crazy numbers. He averaged over 19 points a game, like f- five rebounds, five assists a game. At 6-1, five rebounds. That's yeah. Um, drew a lot of fouls, um, but just didn't shoot from, didn't shoot well. No. Just shot a lot. Just mm-hmm. so much usage, so many shots. And uh, so I think that's where a lot of the scoring volume came from. Yeah. I'm not very at, efficient. I'm looking at his profile right now, and... He, this past season, he attempted 328 two-point field goals. 328. That's kind of a crazy number. I got to compare that to something here. <laughs> um, Give us the context. I'm looking at last year, Kobe Brown attempted 239 twos. You would consider him like shooting a lot of twos. Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah. And uh, Sebastian Thomas shot a hundred over one hundred more attempts. That's kind of insane. That's a lot of shooting for a six-one guard. Uh, this year, Tamar Bates attempted two hundred and twenty twos. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, without uh, seeing like the actual shot chart, it does feel like probably a lot of bad shot selection. But also a lot of shots going in. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, it's weird though. Like it seems like a sh- he's six one compared to Tony Perkins six four, um, but similar style of players. Just looking at their advanced metrics, I mean, high assist rate, not super efficient shooting the ball, but a ton of usage. Yeah, I think I saw. In addition to Missouri, like Arkansas. Georgia, Arkansas, of course, they talk yeah. to everybody. Uh, Georgia, Utah State, Indiana State, and like Fordham, I think, was the list of names, like really wide variety of names there yeah. um, talking to uh, this guy. I can't believe how many players are in the transfer portal. Like, it shouldn't surprise me It's anymore. overwhelming. It is insane. And so many guys are going into the transfer portal, also making themselves available for the NBA draft process, and in their announcement saying they are still considering their old school in all of this. 
Got to have all the bases covered. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I guess it, that's, I guess that's what I would do if I was a player and just trying to like maximize my earning potential for the next season. Basically say, hey, I'm available. I'm not, <laughs> not committed to leaving my current school, but uh, I will go anywhere, basically, yeah. including the NBA if they want me. Yeah, that's been a little bit wild. Um, oh, I also, uh, when I was looking at Taurus Reed visiting K-State, I saw they got a commitment from Doug McDaniel, former Bass Pro Tournament Champions MVP, Doug also, McDaniel. Former Michigan player. Yes, exactly. So And so was Tars Reed. So maybe a little bit of recruitment there that uh, Missouri might have to overcome. Maybe they don't like each other. We just assume Could they're be. friends. Yeah, maybe they don't want that eight-win season <laughs> that they shared at Michigan uh, uh, carrying over. Yeah, we definitely need to split up. That didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, speaking of splitting up, I saw, I was looking at the 24-7 sports like transfer portal rankings. AJ Store is number one, but there's three guys in the top 15 or 20 from Stanford. And I don't know. It's just kind of funny. Bad. Yeah. They were not a good team. They fired their coach. Fired their coach. Everybody's leaving. It's like, oh man, if you could grab all three of those guys on the same squad, you might mm-hmm. have something. <laughs> you might be able to win 12 games at Stanford. Uh, yeah. Pedro Stoyakovich's son. Uh, was at Stanford his freshman season. Wow. He's in the portal. Also thought it was kind of wild that John L. Davis is in the portal, but he he's one that's yeah. doing the whole, I'm mm. in the portal, I'm declaring for the NBA draft, and I might go back to my old school. Who wants me? Yes, exactly. That feels like, uh, I don't know. It'd be weird to see him playing somewhere else, but I guess he could definitely like go to a... Kentucky. Yeah, he could do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's my official prediction. He could go... Uh, Lose in the first round next year, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Kentucky, though, Missouri has reached out to Adu Thoreau, uh, guard that played at Kentucky sparingly this past season. Um, I was trying to find uh, every new... It feels like a lot of the new names in the portal are pushing Javon Porter down the rankings. He's listed really? at 29th now in the transfer portal. And Taurus Reed right behind him at 30th. Come on down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like we could take... I feel like two guards and two bigs at this point seems necessary. Yeah. Like... Yeah, point guard and big man. Like, absolutely you're not getting through the offseason without adding a impact player at both of those positions. Both, both of those positions. Uh, anything else specifically basketball that you have before we just kind of throw out some random news stuff? Uh, it was announced that Missouri is expected to retain women's basketball coach Robin Pinchton. So maybe... Would you be able to tell me uh, Missouri women's basketball record? Oh, yeah. From this past season? It, it wasn't great. Um. I mean, this is respectfully as possible, but I feel like Robin Pinchton has been like barely hanging on for like a few years now. You would have really thought this would have been the final straw. Eleven and nineteen overall, two and fourteen in conference play. And they, yeah, they ended the season on a very long losing streak too. Twelve game losing streak. Yeah. Yeah. So combine, you know, men's and women's basketball teams. That's what, like a over 30 losses in a row to finish oh. the season? Was That's that... rough, yeah. Good Lord. Uh, but Everybody's I mean, back. Yeah. If you, <laughs> we run uh, it back. Yeah, we'll try again <laughs> next year. Uh, if, if you don't have an athletic director and... I mean, yeah. yeah. Who's going to go hire another basketball women's basketball coach? The new, yeah, the new AD is going to come in and be like, what, what was the plan here? <laughs> Yeah, is that what's happening there? Is that situation making it harder to hire an AD that we just like the basketball programs are struggling so much, or they're not doing anything with women's basketball because there's no AD? It feels like a did, yeah. Did did Robin Pynchon just keep her job because there was nobody there to fire her? Basically, it sounds like it. 
I don't know. Maybe they... Uh, Somebody maybe, else could do it, surely, right? Somebody else has the, those powers? Yeah, you would think. But then, yeah, like your search committee that's busy tr- supposedly looking for an AD, it's going to have to shift gears or also take on the role of hiring a women's basketball coach. Because there's no, no AD in sight. Well, we can land uh, Javon Porter now. Yes. We still have that connection. <laughs> um, yeah. I Seriously, though, are they going to hire an athletic director? Uh, Presumably, yes. Mun Choi. Uh-huh. I don't remember the exact quote, but he spoke to the Missourian. Okay. And he said, we are looking to hire an AD. Oh, good. <laughs> So I'm paraphrasing, but he he actually said the word outstanding a few times. We're looking to hire an outstanding AD. So yes, Cameron, they are looking to hire one. Any time frame. He said it might be two weeks. It might be a month. I think it's been both of those things already. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Uh, okay, so no news there. <laughs> Still waiting. Yes. I feel like it's it's... Are they striking out with people, or is this how long it takes to compile a list that you and I threw together in about an hour of looking around? I don't know, but they, they're paying somebody to be doing that, surely. Like, you'd think there would be some kind of movement or news or something. If, if it's like, if they hire, like, it now it, it's making me nervous that, like, all the seemingly good candidates that have ties to the university and are, like, you know, Power Five. I'm thinking of like Ren Baker. It just doesn't make me think that we're getting somebody that good. There's no way. Because there's no way it, the job hasn't been turned down a few times at this point yeah. already. Yeah. At least a few times. Um, but I mean, it makes you wonder like uh, how many people, like, what is the word on the street yeah. about DRF and why she left? And, you know, how is it different from our perception? if at all, and what is that, like, oversight committee, the football, or the, you know, whatever, board of curators thing they did? Mm-hmm. How much is that complicating the situation? How much is that affecting people's decision-making? Yeah. I guess just give the job to John Sonvold at this point. It's fine. He would not turn it down. I can almost guarantee that. Right? He's got a good life, man. <laughs> he doesn't need it. Yeah. Um, uh, something that w- I think was in the news a little bit last week, but it's kind of, I don't know, maybe kind of nothing, but the, uh, that we didn't talk about was the, um, North end zone football stadium, uh, scoreboard. Yeah. Did we talk about that? No. Uh, they've announced plans to redo the scoreboard as part of, tell me if I'm messing this up as part of the greater North end zone concourse yeah. remodel. Yeah. But they're saying scoreboard before football season starts. Right. Yeah, I think they had some kind of like diagram of what it's supposed to look like, uh, which I think it's basically the exact same thing, just bigger. Mm. I'm assuming better yeah. also, yeah. like better screen. Sure. Uh, like two million-ish, though, I think is what estimation was. That's a big TV. It's a big TV. Yeah. Bigger scoreboard to go with the bigger... You know, uh, I don't know. Fan experience. Bigger is always better. North side of the end zone. Yeah. Still, yeah, still have not heard anything about what's coming there, I don't believe. Now that we talk about it, I I still feel like April, which we are now in April, was thrown around as like more information will come out in April. Well, we got more information about the scoreboard. Um... I'm running out of topics here. It's been a slow news week. It's been really slow. Um, Quarterback Matt Zollers, if we're going, if we're switching over to football, go for it. uh, Is announcing his college decision tomorrow. A four-star quarterback, Matt Zollers. Uh, Missouri is involved. They have Mm -hmm. been for a while. He visited Bama, Alabama, and Georgia this week. So um, he had a Mizzou visit. Fairly recently as well, right? But they're the mo- they're the latest ones to get a visit. Yeah, I don't know when he set his commitment date, but it's always kind of like I feel like a bad sign whenever they commit like right after a visit somewhere, mm-hmm. especially when it's like Georgia. You just kind of assume like, well, yeah. And I think Georgia's kind of been the leader throughout, is what it sounds like. So I would be my guess at this point, but 
That's coming tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Specifically. 2 p.m.? I think so. 2 p.m. Central, yeah. Um, okay, so go with me here. He takes that last visit to Alabama, Georgia, gets their final offer. Get one more chance tonight, today, to be in contact with Coach Drink and Mizzou, squeeze that last little bit of NIL money out of them before he picks the Tigers tomorrow. What percent chance is that uh, reality in your mind? Mm, Twelve and a half. Okay. Really feeling Georgia. It wouldn't be the first time that Coach Drink has just uh, plucked a guy out of a random state. That's true. That uh, seemingly has no connection to Mizzou. And yeah, he's like, from uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 A few times now, Coach has just grabbed one of the top players from a random state and is like a four-star guy. Yeah, we don't have a recruiting footprint anymore. Right. Yeah. It's like... We have the internet. We can con- we can talk to anybody. Yes. We get all the Missouri guys. We get them the second time around. Yeah. And we go get random four-star <laughs> players from other states, like North Carolina, Georgia, anybody Pennsylvania. Yeah. <clears throat> I think... Uh, I, I still feel like Missouri has a chance. I feel like... Uh, yeah. You got 12.5%. Yeah. That's... that's Seems like a very accurate number, actually. Penn State and Pittsburgh also involved, in addition to Georgia and Alabama. Got to appease the hometown school. That is true. It's two of them, I guess. <laughs> um, Producer Cameron, you got anything? Nope. Did you know I was coming to you? No, I was just assuming the show's about to be over, so <laughs> <laughs> getting ready. Getting ready to say his line. <laughs> You're probably right there. Okay, sorry for the short episode. We'll try to come up with uh, some kind of game to play or something next week. Uh, keep everybody entertained. Uh, special thank you to our Patreon supporters at the $10 level and above. Britt Trees, Brian Smith, Ryan Demore, Tristan, Ben Smith, Parker, Daddy JD, Tim Keens, Tyler Harsler, Brandon Groffalo, Brandon Hanks, Matthew Tilly, Louis Hernandez, and Joshua Jacobson. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. You can find this podcast. The And I forgot to say we love you. You can find this podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We're on. We're on Twitter at Mizzou Sports Pod, and you can email us at Missouri Sports Pod at gmail.com. You can find our t shirts and stickers on our online shop, Missouri Sports Pod.bigcartel.com. We love you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We will see you next week. <laughs>